Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Steve Ames with Virtualization Advisors. And tonight, I have a nice two-hour presentation for you. It's super informative. No, I'm just totally kidding. Completely kidding. I'm going to keep this short, brief, because I know I'm standing between you and the food and beverage outside. So we'll get onto that in just a moment. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about all flash storage. I'm going to go through a couple things, a couple of problems that we're seeing in the industry, and how we go about and solve them. So the first thing I want to do is take you for a little trip down memory lane. And we're in our fourth generation of flash storage. So we're going to start back in the beginning. And that was generation one, legacy disk arrays. So as things started off a long time ago, we had chassis. And in the chassis, we would have hard drives. And our goal was simply to present that storage out to servers. It was really simple. There wasn't much intelligence to it, and certainly not much software. Going forward to generation two, now we're introducing concepts like dual controller and a little bit of software, uh, typically centered around single workloads. So there was pretty much a one-to-one -one mapping between the storage on the SAN and perhaps the Exchange server or database server that it was serving. Going forward into generation three, that's when we start to see the introduction of data services. So data services means things like thin provisioning, deduplication, and a much, much greater degree of pooling of resources. And now finally, we're in generation four, where we have multiple controllers, uh, we definitely have mixed workloads, and a whole host of new problems. So in a traditional SAN, we were really trying to balance capacity in the SAN against performance. So when we take a look at a technology like Extreme I.O., we've seen a few other fast up-and-comers in the industry. Uh, data Domain was our deduped uh, disk-based backup system. Uh, then after that, VMware was the fastest growing one, and now it's the Extreme I.O. All flash arrays are taking the market by storm. And so, well, why is this happening? Why is Flash so relevant today? And the first time I heard about this, I really scratched my head. I said, well, why is this important? OK, sure, there's probably a few really large companies out there, Disney, Florida Power and Light. They probably have some special application where they have to have all the speed in the world. But why would something like this be relevant to the rest of us? And then somebody came along and said, ah, well, we can dedupe the storage. And I shook my head and I said, wow, you're really barking up the wrong tree. Because deduping our primary storage is normally a bad idea. Why is it bad? It's really simple. It takes math, processor, and memory time. Those are usually constrained on a storage system. So why would I ask my storage system to go do more math, more processing to dedupe uh, my data. And then if we ever get behind on that, meaning the workload demands more than my dedupe process can do, I can get behind. And I said, no, 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 that's a bad idea. So then EMC developed an inline deduplication system, and they built this platform from the ground up specifically for Flash. So now we have an all the time inline deduplication system. And I said, ah, I get it now. It's about efficiency. So I can take a two to three million dollar traditional storage system and replace it with a half million to million dollar all flash system because of the deduplication ratio. At 10 to 1, 20 to 1, it's a game changer. The speed was simply a happy byproduct. So he said, okay, well, why is it important? Because there's a lot of people coming out there today with all flash arrays. Why is it important to rebuild it from the ground up? Well, what a lot of people have done is they took existing SAN technology and tried to insert flash drives into the array. They're still using RAID 6. They're still using RAID 5. And so there's a lot of overhead in that. But the other issue that we run into is with these flash drives, there's a certain amount of duration that they can survive on. So what I mean by that is, every single time that I write something to a flash disk, it has to go erase that cell first and then go right to it. And every single time we do that, it's kind of like shuffling around on the same area on the carpet will wear it out over time. And so what's happening is other uh, flash array vendors are having 
to work around this. They're having to use what are called EMLC drives. They're having to use uh, different software techniques to try to stay ahead of it and then hope their warranty will stay out in front. EMC said, no, we're gonna do it completely differently. They took a blank whiteboard and they took the gentleman who invented RAID 6 technology and he realized from the beginning that this wasn't gonna work. We can't use spinning disk technology on all flash. So they created a proprietary, and I'm gonna call it RAID system just to make it relevant, but it's not RAID, uh, called XFS. And then what they're doing is um, scaling the data across all the drives in the system. And as I'll show you in a minute, when we wanna scale beyond our initial uh, setup, we, we definitely wanna be able to scale that performance and capacity. The other thing, and I'll go ahead with one here. So what does this look like? So we got a couple of components in here. So I'm gonna dive below uh, the covers here for a second and get into the technology for just a minute. So down here on the bottom, we have our, our flash array uh, disks, but we also have a lot of memory and active active controllers. Active active is important to stay ahead of the workload because uh, all flash arrays can push a lot of performance. So the key here in extending this is to have how do we scale it? So we can start with a single unit called an x brick And an x brick is a chassis with storage in it and a pair of controllers. So every time that we wanna grow the system, we simply add another x brick and connect it with what's called an InfiniBand fabric on the back end. So now, every single time I wanna add more capacity and add more performance, I just add another brick. So now it's completely scalable, uh, but yet shares all the resources across all the bricks. And so now what happens is we can start with a single X brick and grow it and then continue to grow it up to an entire rack. So now we have something that can start at about a half terabyte and grow up into the many terabytes. Yet the performance of the environment continues to scale with it. So let's take a look at two scenarios here of where this might come in handy in the real world. So an actual customer data workload would be something like an online transaction processing database with an 8K block size. There's two problems that show up when we try to virtualize this and put it on all flash. One is we run into latency problems. So as we can see here, there's spikes in the latency. And so now what we're doing is we have a low latency, consistent and predictable platform. The second problem that we see is in a concept called system level garbage collection. And so what happens is, as the system writes in other flash systems, what they have to do is go back behind and do post-process deduplication, and they have to go do cleanup. And the problem with this is, is under high load, the latency can get worse, and in many cases, worse than disk. So we've gotten out in front of that as well. So in the end, it's a simple little story. We go to all flash with an active-active controller with inline real-time deduplication, not for the speed, but for the efficiency. So as you grow your virtualized environment, you can put highly dedupable data onto these systems and get a whole lot farther than a similar sized traditional disk array. So it should be done as a return on investment project. And that's the end of it. So thank you very much for coming out today. Hopefully you got to see something new and we'd like to have you join us outside for some beverages and a little bit of food. Thank you very much.